folks, this has been a crazy year in college basketball. It's been a crazy year in sports, but this has manifested perhaps more than anything on the college side. This is a year in which the blue bloods of the sport, if you will, don't have a seat at the table. I'm going to read off some teams that are typically in the dance, going well into the tournament, and I'll tell you where they are here. This is according to ESPN Bracketology. Joe Lenardi entering tonight. It may have changed in the last couple of hours. I haven't checked. Michigan State, last four in. They would play a play-in game in Dayton. Duke, first four out. North Carolina is a 10 seed. Kentucky is out. If you want to put Syracuse in that category, which is debatable, they are, I believe, next four out as well. Dylan, I'll go to you first on this one. Bizarre college basketball season, March Madness in the offing. What do you make of everything that's been going on right now in college basketball? A lot of teams we don't typically see at the top line or on the top line, and a lot of teams we typically see at the top line or at or near being out of the tournament. A fascinating season as far as I look at it. I completely agree. And well, for one thing, if you're a if you're a fan of one of those top line teams, uh, it's not only disappointing, but it can be very difficult to accept because you know, as the entire world has felt for a year, you're like, I, you probably feel like I, we really got slighted, and I can't, I can't believe that. Like, how, how are they letting this happen? Um, and you know, and and unfortunately, those fans and those programs are just gonna have to say look, this is, you can call this season what you want. You can count it in your record books. Maybe you won't, and that's fine. But this season is what it is. You're just going to have to accept that. If you're one of those teams that is finding themselves in a position higher than they usually find themselves in, um, you, you probably feel a little bit of imposter syndrome, thinking maybe it's just the nature of this season. But guess what? You're there, and it's great for your program, uh, and it's great for the exposure of your program. Um, so I hope those teams realize that they can just take it and run with it. And, um, hopefully they can, uh, dance for as long as they are called for in March madness. Um, and it's, it's the beauty of this particular month of college basketball that even with those great teams, we never know what's going to happen. Uh, so it just makes it that much more exciting. You know, I'm, uh, I'm kind of happy that th- it's weird to say, but I'm kind of happy these teams are not going to be, you know, one, two seed, like they always are. I, I just think it's, it's cool to see. Um, you know, you got teams like Illinois is one of my favorite teams to watch. Um, I was usually a good program, but they're up top. You know, it's, it's good to see different teams taking those top spots, especially, you know, it's, it's been a weird, crazy, you know, year in, in, in sports and around the world, of course, but <laughs> this is fitting, you know, almost that these top teams are not in it because it's just, you never, you don't know what's happening. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, so it is, I'm almost, I, I like the fact that those teams are in there because like you said, Dylan, it, it gives these other teams a chance to dance. Um, it's, so it's, it's just really cool to me. I, I cannot wait for March 18th to Thursday when we get going with March madness. Uh, it's just arguably the most exciting time in all of sports. You could say, um, just cause again, you never know what's going to happen. And, and that the fact that these teams are not in it you know, always just working their way through the early parts of the bracket. I, I just think it's a really, really cool thing to see uh, for a lot of smaller programs. I'll read you off the uh, ESPN Bracketology current one and two seeds. So the one seeds right now, Gonzaga, okay, that's uh, typical enough. Michigan, eh, they had a good year. They're usually around the top. Makes enough sense. Illinois, Baylor, those are the one seeds. You've got Illinois and Baylor, two teams that are – that may be typically pretty good, but not not at that level. Now the two seeds. This is where we this is where we get really interesting. Got Ohio State, maybe not so crazy. Iowa, best player in the country in Luca Garza. Alabama was a team I love, and Houston. This is great. I love this. This is great parody in college basketball. But you know more than anything, like I can sit here with a straight face. Before the show starts, we were all talking about college basketball, the three of us, our shadow, Tyler Who, and we were. I said that with a straight face, if Alabama's in the right region, they're going to the Final Four. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, I might be wrong on that. 
but it's something I think. And it's something I can say with a straight face without being laughed out of the room because they're really good this year. It's cool. I, I, I think it's good for college basketball. And you know, we were talking last year before the tournament, like Dayton was going to be a one seed last year. I was maybe sentimentally going to pick them to win it all before everything got shut down. Yeah, now we're sitting here and it's yeah, all these different teams. And you know, I, I look on those first two uh, eight seeds, and I could be wrong, but none of those coaches have a national title, as far as I know. Um, unless there's something I was missing with Kelvin Sampson in Houston. So this is this is really exciting stuff. I, I want to also bring this up uh, before we wrap up here. I really believe this is a year, and I'm just going to throw this take out there, and you guys can react to it. I think there's going to be a lot of upsets this year. I don't know it's, if it's because of the nature of the season. Almost seems like there's less good mid-majors this year, but I also believe it's been a wild year. There's been a lot of stuff going on off the court uh, that we uh, need not trivialize, but – Needless to say, it's not your typical college basketball season. And we always see upsets in March to a certain degree. But I think it's going to be turned up this year. I think we're going to get a lot of upsets, a lot of great stuff going on the first weekend of the tournament. And, and guys, I cannot wait. I think it's going to be awesome. My goodness, it's going to be so exciting. I also just want to first point out here, um, shout out to the Big 12 and the SEC. Because I think the way we tend to think about it, at least in my head, and maybe I'm just crazy, but um, I think we tend to think of the ACC and the Big Ten typically as this as the top tier basketball conferences, um, and we'll put and we'll put the Big East up there also, um, or maybe they're in between the first and second tier. I'm getting too specific. And then you put the Big Twelve and the SEC kind of in that second tier, still great, still Power Five conferences, but not as good as the Big Ten and the ACC typically. Um, that completely flipped this year. You look at teams like Baylor and Illinois and. Iowa and then and then Alabama and and you go wow this is great not only just specific programs but but different conferences are getting that that light that that the ACC and the Big Ten teams get uh, but in terms of what the actual tournament has in store for us um, it, you know I, I agree there's going to be a lot of upsets just because of the nature of like there are going to be programs in this tournament that are used to the tournament and the way that it's set up. Um, and this is going to be a totally different way of doing it. It's probably not going to be full capacity of fans. The whole thing's happening in one city. It's just a whole, it's a whole different monster than anyone in the college hoops world is used to. And of course, having North Carolina as a number 10 seed probably means that that's going to be technically an upset. Uh, and that's fine, but there's going to be a lot of great stuff. And you know what? I don't disagree with you about Alabama either. I think if, if things go right for them on selection Sunday, they could be a final four team. I think Loyola Chicago could be an elite eight team again, um, depending on the way things fall. But uh, you know, you know, Nick, I'm very curious of, of your uh, predictions as to what's going to happen next month. Um, I'll say this just because I watched the game on Saturday and it was one of the most terrific performances I've seen uh, by a college player. Scared to think that he's younger than I am too. It's <laughs> frightening um, to think that there's, a person out there younger than me with that much talent uh, in the game of basketball, Kate Cunningham and the Oklahoma state team. Uh, wow. Uh, I, I think they could do something crazy in the tournament um, simply because of that kid. Uh, he's, he's the best player in, in, in my opinion. Yeah. Luca Garza, of course, but I, I say he's right up there. Uh, he's just unstoppable when he's on his game uh, and you put him on a big stage like that. I think Marvelous things could happen for that team. Um, so so those guys are one of my kind of, I guess you could say a sleeper pick. I like that. Like you said, zone with UNC, you know, those guys technically are going to be upset worthy, uh, but it's UNC. You know, it's that's that's one of those big name teams that, of course, will be in the tournament this year. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just real interesting to me because with this year, you have a lot of teams who just marched their way through their schedules uh, with, with relative ease. You know, uh, Baylor lost their first game of the season to Kansas Saturday night too, I believe. They had a tough OT win against West Virginia. I also like that West Virginia team. Um, <laughs> there's just a lot going on in college basketball this year that I think once the whole bracket is kind of out there and we see everything, who's in, who's out, who's playing, who, when, it's just going to be – I mean, it is called March Madness for a reason. It will be madness trying to pick and decipher between this team winning against that team or, or whatever it is. But I'll, I'll say it again. I love that Oklahoma State team. I think – if I had to pick someone who I think is 
a team not likely to win, but if I want to just go out there and throw it in, I would say Oklahoma State. I love that team. I love what they've got, and I think good things could happen there. Yeah, Nick, if we sit here long enough and I sim the NBA draft lottery long enough on Tankathon, we can get Kate Cunningham on the Knicks. <laughs> very, <laughs> it took, very true. <laughs> it, I got it on about the third try the other night. I was kept hitting Tankathon, and it, the Mavericks pick went right up to one. one I don't know time. how I did Let's it. Let's get lucky one time. Let's get lucky one time. All right, this is about the 12th attempt here. Uh, it keeps landing on the Magic. Oh, well. <laughs> I have to give it up. Magic and Pistons. Uh, not nearly as fun. 